I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 286. Really it is December 2021. I'm Ethan. Baby, and I'm Liam. Outside. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many, many things we can't talk about right here on the first and the only wrestling podcast. That's right. Um, I am an editor at WrestlingObserver.com. Liam is at TWL underscore podcast on Twitter. You can follow him for general merriment and observations about pro wrestling. And those are our credentials if you're somehow new to the show i don't know if our there... bona fides if you will <laughs> yes not sure if there are any uh new listener or not but you know we never really reset we just sort of started yeah. talking started talking several years ago and uh <laughs> and we've never done a reset since but uh, that's who we are and we're here to talk about pro wrestling uh yeah well winter came in all elite wrestling this week, and unfortunately, it was not Katie Lee Birchall. Always, always holding out hope when that when that name is there. <laughs> sure am. Um, yeah, so there was a match of the year contender, a one hour draw between Hangman Page and Brian Danielson for the AEW World Title. What did you think of the show? What did you think of the match? Uh, yeah, I thought the match was great it was it was interesting because i thought it was really good great even i wouldn't have necessarily said it was the best match of the year and then i saw a lot of people on twitter talking about it as if it was and then i sort of slowly started to realize that all of the people that were talking about that were people that were watching the fight tv version that didn't have commercials ah um and i don't think the commercials hurt it that much because like i said i still enjoyed it quite a bit um but I do wonder if if you saw this uncut, perhaps it was even it was even better, maybe. So maybe it would have been at that you know match of the year level. Um, but yeah, as it was, I thought it was great. I think you can argue it's a little risky to do another long match draw so soon after the Danielson and Omega one. I mean, it's not that soon. It's been whatever it was three months ago. But um, I I think they it was probably also brought about as we've talked about on the show by the fact that I don't think Brian Danielson was supposed to be in this spot originally. I think, I think John Moxley was, and obviously that was not an option. So they probably didn't want to beat. It's a rare example of, I understand why they booked a match where they didn't want to beat anyone as opposed to a lot of other companies that do that. And (laughs) you get frustrated because they didn't have to like this in this case, with the tournament that they had set up, who was left, I guess you could have put Miro or, or somebody else in that spot, but um, I don't think you want, but because Danielson was in the tournament, I think once Moxley was out, you kind of had to have him win and you had to do this match. And if you didn't want to beat him yet, especially when you have a couple of other big shows coming up, they have the, whatever that TNT battle of the belt special is. And then they have, of course, the, the big move to TBS. So I would assume they're going to want to do a rematch of this on one of those shows. So I thought it was a draw that made sense. And as far as a match, I, I thought about it and I think the match it would most closely resemble to me is the mankind Shawn Michaels match which might seem like a weird comparison, but in the, in the <laughs> sense that you took a baby face world champion that everybody loves and he's, but he's very white meat or has been very white meat. And he's been kind of, you know, he has this sort of very humble and, and awkward nature to him. Not that Shawn Michaels was humble or awkward ever, but, but he, <laughs> but that was sort of the presentation of Shawn Michaels world champion, the boyhood dream and all that. Sure. And, and Sean and Foley always talk about how that match was designed to show, hey, this white meat baby face is tough as nails and can fight with the best of them. And I felt like that's what they showed because a lot of that match was Hangman Page getting his, his hide wore out by, by Brian Danielson getting kicked and stretched and, and you know he bled and all that. 
and then, you know, still came back raring to go. And if, you know, it's the classic, you know, if the match had gone 10 seconds longer or five seconds longer, um, you know, uh, Hangman wins the match. So I feel like it was, it was maybe designed as you don't beat either men, but you also maybe give, uh, give the Hangman character a little bit of a, a tougher edge than he had coming in, if that makes sense. Yeah, I can endorse that. I can endorse that. I watched the first 59 minutes of it in a uh, GIF form only and just saw like a bunch of dragon suplexes and stuff. And then I turned the television on and saw the last one minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the best way to watch it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I like, as we've talked about before, very few times, no matter how much I like the individual wrestlers involved, do I think a match needs to go 60 minutes? You know, there's just not. <laughs> sure. There's not been many matches in the history of professional wrestling, even 60 minute matches that I liked that I thought that was good because it went so long. Right. Um, So, you know, I could see them rematching and having a 25 minute match. That's even that I think is that I enjoy maybe even better, not only because it might have a finish, but also because it's not an hour long. And I think that's, that's the other thing too, is like, if you think about matches that you want to go back and rewatch, um it's hard for me to go okay i'm gonna watch one 60 minute match that i've already seen before it's hard for me to really sit down and watch that a second time so like i said i don't think it was an all-time classic i think it was very very good and it succeeded in in i think maybe helping the hangman character a little bit um but yeah i mean definitely definitely at least one thumb up for it well, there you go. There's your review, everyone. Uh, the rest of the show, I thought was just kind of there. Yeah, and it, it, I think the uh, and we haven't. I don't think we've seen the full quarter hour breakdown yet, but I think the ratings are going to reflect that because that second hour had a Wardlow squash. A a <laughs> I I liked the Serena Deeb Sheeta match, but I did not think it was their best effort, and they didn't really have the time to have like a great match anyway. Um, yeah. It was the classic AEW eight minute women's match stretched out over a commercial break. Um, and then the main event was fine. I didn't think it was bad by any means, but I also, I didn't think, I didn't think the result was in doubt. <laughs> Once yeah. I saw that Dante Martin was, was MJF's opponent. I just didn't, it doesn't. And the, the ring thing is such a heel gimmick anyway. Kind of, it's kind of like King of the Ring, where it's it's so rare for that it makes sense for a baby face to win it. So it just made sense that MJF. I mean, and they also, you know, they didn't announce that Sting and Darby and CM Punk were all going to run out in the last thirty seconds of the show either. So that might also have hurt viewership if you just saw the main event was MJF versus versus Dante Martin and, and checked out there. But yeah, I I thought it was a very good first hour, and then a. Uh, second hour that I will not remember in about three days time. Yeah. As you mentioned, we don't have the, uh, the hourly or the quarterly breakdowns or anything like that, but they were, uh, they were slightly up in total view or they were up like 76,000 viewers total from last week. And they were down in the demo overall. So uh, they did the highest total total viewership since November 17th but uh, it's tied for their lowest demo number in the last 10 weeks. So there's that. Yeah. Like I said, I'll definitely be interested to looking, look into that because I know their previous like long matches, which were all, I think around the 30 minute mark, which is like the Omega pack match, obviously the Omega Danielson match all kind of grew viewership as they went and grew in the demo. So I'll be interested to see if there's a point in this hour long match where, they turned off where people got sick of it or if they stayed with it for that first hour and then that second hour just took a real hard nosedive like i'll definitely be interested to see well something that uh i thought was going to happen was uh the debut of Wyndham rotunda and that did not happen i guess they teased uh kind of like a, a black magic apprentice for malachi black and I guess that's going to be Brody King because it was reported by Body Slam, which is kind of a shaky source sometimes. But 
Mm-hmm. Also, the FTR guys talked to them. Uh, they reported on Wednesday night that Brody King had signed with AEW. And it would just make sense. I think he and uh, Malachi Black have hold the uh, PWG tag titles together. So those two were mm-hmm. both big tatted up dudes. And it appeared that they were introducing an apprentice for Malachi Black in a vignette during winter is coming. And it's assumed that that's Brody King, but no Wyndham. But maybe Brody King coming in. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, good, good for a talented guy to get a get a spot there. Obviously, the the death of Ring of Honor, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, is is nigh, and and so to see a guy get a get a chance outside of there is great. I'm not, uh, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this. I'm not a huge fan of the the Malachi Black lore. What? And uh, so when I honestly, well, it was funny. Because I fast forwarded through that segment and then I looked on Twitter and I saw people talking about, oh, this must be Brody King because he there's a line in it about how you will no longer just be a king or something like that. And I was like, what? What? Oh, and I, and I realized, oh, I didn't I didn't see that because I fast forwarded through the entire <laughs> Malachi Black thing. Um, you have it. Yeah, I did. I was a real it was a real Brian and Vinny uh, <laughs> review where they they mentioned something during an entrance or a uh, or a vignette that i skipped and and so i yeah. didn't see it but yep. uh, but yeah i uh i i i think another good tag team that can have good matches is a good thing um even if i might continue to fast forward the the vignettes and the promos surrounding them for the most part so you mentioned the death of ring of honor and they still claim, by the way, that they're coming back in April with uh, Death Before Dishonor or whatever their big April show is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the very least, they're going on hiatus for the next three months, even though they were liquidating merchandise and basically doing everything but selling the ring <laughs> at, uh, at Final Battle this past weekend. But they held perhaps the final final battle. They called it the end of an era show. Everyone sure is acting as though Ring of Honor is never going to run another show. Despite their insistence that they'll possibly run another show. It's like they're the ones who are who called it the end of an era show. And mm-hmm. we're, we're saying basically this is the last show ever, even though they're insisting that they're coming back in April. It's a very strange situation, but I don't expect that they'll ever run another show. I expect that they'll maybe repurpose old footage and repackage that and just play that on all their syndicated stations and what have you. And times they might keep that, you know, there might be a ring of honor programming on all the Sinclair stations across the country, but it's going to be repurposed old highlights and stuff with AJ Styles and Kevin Steen and El Generico Mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. But they had Ring of Honor final battle this past weekend. Their world champion tested positive for COVID. Bandito, by the way, gets COVID like as often as Lamar Jackson gets it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the th- it's like the third time that Bandito's gotten missed coronavirus, and um, <laughs> so he was forced. To, the The world champion got got COVID like forty eight hours before the show, and so Jonathan Gresham wrestled now AEW's Jay Lethal in perhaps the final Ring of Honor match ever, and Gresham won the world title. Uh, the Kingdom was out there. Maria was out there taking bumps on the apron like a friggin' pro. God bless her. Uh, yeah, man, going to miss her. Uh, <laughs> just just a really... It was a fun show from what I saw. I saw probably the last half of the show, and uh, I thought it was quite good. Did you see any, uh, any of the last, but not last, but probably the last <laughs> Ring of Honor show? Yeah, I did. I actually watched the whole show. A uh, buddy came over and we watched it. And uh, yeah, it was it was a funeral. It was. <laughs> and that's not to say that people worked really hard. People worked really hard up and down this show. I thought the Shane Taylor, Kenny King match was really good um, as far as like a hardcore brawl. Um, I thought that was a lot of fun um, and, and a really great match. I thought the main event was very good. Gresham has, has been great for a long time. And yeah. Um, he and Jay Lethal had a very, very good professional wrestling match in, in the main event. And the, yeah, the whole roster emptying out to 
kind of come down and rally the crowd for the finish, I thought was really sweet. But yeah, as far as this being the end or not being the end. So after the show, they do this big thing. Ian Riccoboni throughout the show is just openly talking about how people are all auditioning for jobs in other companies. <laughs> Himself um, included. Yes. Yeah. Um, as yes, yeah, he's going to be doing some New Japan Strong, I think, as he's uh, announced. But, but yeah, they're, like it's he's just everyone. So I think it's not impossible that a, a a show with the name Ring of Honor on it will be run, right in in April 2022 or beyond. But I do not believe that anyone on this show will be on it, except maybe <laughs> EC3 and his guys, because <laughs> like what else are they doing? Um, sure. But as far as the, you know, the Josh Woods, all of your champions, Roxy um, uh, and Gresham now and Bandito and all these guys who are now free agents and will likely look to sign somewhere that gives them some sort of security, some sort of even if it's with impact or something where they can still work indies and stuff. I'm going to guess people are going to look for contracts because they, you know, that, that with that comes at least a little bit of security um so i don't know how many of these people will still be available available to them even if they wanted to come back and work and also i'm guessing a lot of them don't want to work for a company that fired them (laughs) fired them unexpectedly and shut and closed their doors and fired everyone um uh so yeah i i think it's not impossible that ring of honor quote unquote will continue on but uh, like you said, it'll probably be a lot of archive footage as far as the weekly TVs. And then, yeah, maybe they'll they'll look to move to a, a GCW type model where you're just bringing guys in for spot shows and you're and you're doing per appearance deals. But but yeah, it, this this really just felt like a funeral. <laughs> so, um, you know, I appreciated how hard everybody worked. Like I said, there was some good wrestling on it. Um, and, and I guess we would expect that the Briscoes are coming into AEW speaking of which considering uh, the big angle where they won the ring of honor tag titles and then uh, FTR showed up to attack them and they had a big brawl. So would assume they're, they're doing something there and there's people from NWA on this show. There were people from impact on this show. So, I mean, I imagine people are going to be showing up here, there and everywhere. So uh, yeah, it was uh, it was an interesting end, and it'll be interesting to see like what they do with the belts and stuff like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. It was uh, it was a show. Uh, speaking of the things that were just a show, uh, Monday night. I, I don't know why I'm belittling the program like that after you just said it was good and everyone worked hard, <laughs> and I said that I enjoyed what I saw of it. But yeah, it was a show. Uh, Monday night Raw this week. If you like Bobby Lashley wrestling three times, that was the show for you. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, and you, we know who does like it. We know who loves Bob Lashley wrestling. <laughs> Vincent, Vincent K. McMahon and Bruce Pritchard. Uh, um, I don't, I, I, I guess they had like the idea was, well, we need a, a storyline to hook people and keep them coming back um, throughout the show or whatever. But, I mean, historically speaking, the more times someone is on a show, the less people tune in. So it's, uh, it's weird to do that with it like a heel, too. And it's like Lashley has sure been, pre- <laughs> been presented so dominantly that like he's going to be a heel that people cheer and cheer probably. Mm-hmm. But um, also, he still d- does very much have heel MVP cutting heel promos for him. So it's definitely weird. It's not like the time that they had Rollins do the gauntlet or whatever on that raw three mm-hmm. years ago or four years ago. Like it was a heel. <laughs> Ran through three top guys. Yeah. Two of whom were heels. Yep. <laughs> Third of whom is the world champion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The world champion went last in this gauntlet and uh and I couldn't beat lost. him. No, it was <laughs> Despite the other two guys interfering on his behalf, but I guess they did attack the E too. But yeah, it was, uh, it was inter- like, again, it's like, okay, why isn't Bob Lashley just the champion? Because clearly he's the guy that they want to prepare more than any sure. other. Is, is Big Bill coming back for Mania? Are they going to do one more Bob Lashley and Goldberg match? So Lashley's going to win this belt again. Probably. And then, and Bill and Bill and Bob for the title. You might as well. 
<laughs> you really might as well. I mean, what else do you got, right? Like, right. Like Biggie and Rollins or something. Right. Well, I've been hearing that was going to be the program, and I saw that match on a house show this year, but <laughs> I has yet, really yet to be the program. And I, I don't, I, I, yeah, it's, it sure seems like uh, Lashley against a part timer is the way to go. Or the, the way they're going to go. And after you just um, you you put Lashley over at the expense of the other three guys in that match, I don't see why he shouldn't just be the champion. Like, that's really who cares. And that's fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you feel for, like, Big E, who is not right. a stellar. He's had a very much a CM Punk, uh, Jericho, <laughs> Benoit type title reign so far. Um, but like at this point, I think Biggie is a star, but he's not going to be the star anyway, just because of the way they've chosen to book him. Not that he doesn't have the talent to be, but let's, we're just trying to be realistic here. Yeah. Like if, I mean, it's, well, we've talked about it for a lot of different companies and a lot of different ways where these, somebody is very clearly the focal point of the entire show. And that person's not the champion. Why not just make him the champion? Who cares? <laughs> yes. Like, I think he won the title. He won the title in September, like the second week of September. I think uh, that's what happened. I think so. I think it was like, I think it was maybe be on that Labor Day Raw. Yeah, that might be. It was, I think it was the second Raw of September. So that would, that, anyway, that's, that's about right. So then, I believe he, his first uh, did he have a title defense before uh, the uh, the Survivor Series match? I can't remember. I think he beat Bob in a rematch at some point on a Raw. They did a cage match or something. That's right. That's right. He did. But he did. I don't think it helps when you're trying to establish a guy who's been like a tag team guy for the last half decade. I don't think it helps a lot, though, to like book him against Roman Reigns and have Roman Reigns beat him mm-hmm. <laughs> like like pretty quickly into that run like two months into his run um yeah so and uh no one makes them book the champion versus champion matches where you have to beat one of <laughs> <laughs> you have to beat exactly half of your champions <laughs> Well, you'd think that would be a reason to keep NXT involved, right? Because then you could just beat all the NXT guys that Vince doesn't care about. Why not? <laughs> Why right. not? Yeah, it really doesn't matter at this point. NXT 2.0, I think people are like upset by this show or think it sucks or whatever. And I watch it every week and it's like, it's totally fine. It, like, yeah. like, there's absolutely. There's absolutely nothing you need to go out of your way to watch. But also, it's not like a terrible wrestling show. It's like it's vignettes for for these people that they're trying to establish and mm-hmm. short matches with these people that people they're trying to establish and like some 90s storytelling where like they're fighting over Brett's ring jacket, like that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's fine. It's yeah, totally I mean- fine. Yeah, I mean that's exactly how I would describe it. It's 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 nineteen ninety five wrestling challenge or something. There's, it's not right. you're not going to see anything spectacular on it. They I think everybody worked really hard on that war game show, but it's a lot of green people working with not green people who are trying to teach the green people to be less green. And other than that, it's it's short matches and vignettes, like you said. It's it's nineteen ninety five, baby. I would argue with your point that there's nothing spectacular on the show when basically their main strategy to try to get younger viewers seems to be put Mandy Rose on TV in a cat suit as much as possible. <laughs> I think I mean, that's I've, kind of spectacular. I mean, I've heard of worse, uh, worse, worse ways of, of trying to attract a younger demo, but yeah. Um, yes, there's, there is some very lewd uh, camera angles and things that, <laughs> Uh, we have not seen on main roster WWE television in a very long time on that show. So they, uh, I guess you get a little bit of envelope pushing in, in that way. If that's uh, if that floats your boat and boy, the, the, the 600,000 uh, senior citizens who watch that show are 
clearly big fans of it. Great. This, by the way, plays into my theory, by the way, that uh, the proliferation of Internet pornography killed the wrestling business. (laughs) It's like (laughs) the Attitude Era stuff that was edgy in WWF. uh, All of a sudden, everyone had the Internet in their house and had uh, images of absolutely anything you can imagine at their fingertips. (laughs) It's like all of a sudden, like loot camera angles weren't going to get it done anymore. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think there is a certain feeling of if you want to see that, there are places that are uh, just for that that you can go to that, uh, that don't require you to watch uh, fake wrestling. And, you know, maybe in some of it, the acting might be a little bit better too. Who knows? All right. Um, New Japan, they had a show this week. (laughs) There were, let's see, counting the finals, there were 23 shows on the Best of the Super Juniors (laughs) World Tag League Tour. (laughs) There's been a show almost every day since like the second week in November. It's it's a lot. And then they have four shows next week, including a show on Christmas Eve. <laughs> and <laughs> then they're then they're into Wrestle Kingdom season where they have two dome shows and then an arena show with New Japan versus Noah. And they um, they're just uh, they're just churning out, churning out shows and continually churning out shows. And their con their strategy seems to be just churn out shows. Yep, uh, the the number of shows will increase. So there's until, that. Uh, yep, number of shows will increase until morale improves, and uh, and yeah, we're just yes. gonna keep going. We're just gonna keep going, and there's no other way that we could possibly make any money. So we're just gonna keep putting the same 150 people into these arenas, and uh, yeah, uh, I mean, hey, there, I guess it was somewhat newsworthy. We kind of have some ideas of stuff that's going to be happening on the dome shows. Yeah. I mean, we have full cards for two of the dome shows and uh, we still don't know what's going to happen with new Japan versus Noah, which seems like a kind of a big deal given it's, you know, 23 days away or whatever the number is. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, you think maybe you want to get around to announcing matches for that, but uh, what do I know? Uh, we'll have to see you, how that plays out. You would think that if your main driving revenue source is live ticket sales, that you may yes. want to announce what these people might want to pay to see uh, ahead of time. Yes. Yeah. So there's that. So uh, Katsuyori Shibata announced his return after uh, he had a uh, subdural hematoma that 17 and he's coming back in January on January 4th and he's uh, facing an unnamed opponent on that show that's interesting like I get it's is it Saber again you think like just by or is he in a tag title match Saber's in a tag title match on the same on the same night so okay. I doubt it's Saber. So maybe it's one of his his students at the LA Dojo or something. It's high enough on the card uh, that I think it could be uh, someone else. And you know they're still doing two week uh, quarantines to uh, get in and out of the country. I guess Danielson would be new entry, so Danielson is probably not going to be allowed in. Mm. Uh, I was going to say it was Danielson or Danielson would make sense. Like he could leave uh, the country today and be quarantined for two weeks and be good for January 4th. But they're also not allowing new uh, visas issued to foreigners in Japan. So it, w- it has to be someone. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe a Jay White. I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's that's the law of averages. If you think it's if it's got to be somebody that's not on those shows, if everybody that else that would make sense is kind of already booked on stuff, 
that's in the in Japan regularly, then yeah, it's got to be one of those guys. Yeah, but uh, we'll see how good an I- how good of an idea it is for the uh, for the guy. To hang- just knocked over an entire stack of stuff here. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see how how uh, how good of an idea it is to, for a guy who had a subdural hematoma b- bleeding on the brain, uh, who was forced to retire. How good an idea it is for him to come back. Yeah, it doesn't seem ideal. I don't know how much uh, cryotherapy or uh, you know time off uh, uh, is good to. Uh, keep you from being susceptible to further brain bleeding but uh yeah i mean hope hope it goes okay hope hope he's uh safe in whatever you could be the safest version of choosing to wrestle again after having that sort of injury right so uh wwe has day one coming up on new year's day new japan has shows on january 4th 5th and 8th AEW has that Battle of the Belts show mm-hmm. on whatever it is. Is that also on the 8th? I think so, maybe. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, boy. It's whatever that Saturday is, I think. Yeah, it's the 8th. And uh, I'll be dead on January 9th. So <laughs> we have all that to look forward to. And uh, anything else you want to get into here? No, I think there's, uh, there's, there's a lot going on. A lot has happened, as we like to say. Uh, but yeah, I I think it's been an interesting last few weeks, and it w- which is maybe not what I expect out of a December in pro wrestling. When you got J- New Japan doing World Tag League, at WWE doing nothing, and you got you know and you got AEW in the mix there, I guess now too. But uh, December is not always the most exciting month for topical wrestling talk. So I, uh, you know, it all it took was a few a few exciting things happening across the TV shows. Uh, you know, a guy who had brain bleeding announcing his return and uh, another company ceasing to exist. So that's all it took for us to have a, an interesting topical show. It's uh, our end of the year stuff where uh, Liam asks you, the listener, uh, what was the best stuff of the year? And I sit here and go, hmm, yes, I, <laughs> I see. I see what the people like. Hmm. So two weeks of that coming up. Uh, so enjoy that. Happy holidays, everybody. Till next time, I'm Ethan. I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. For real, dog, your lips look delicious. Well, maybe just a half a drink more. Never such a blizzard. I've got to go home. You'll freeze out there. Say, lend me your Afro comb. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. More more conversations to start with you, who. (laughs) It shouldn't just be reserved for like a fake chocolate milk drink and cartoon rabbits, you know? (laughs) Oh yeah! It's always a always a good way to start start a conversation. <laughs> Getting a waiter's attention, you know, anything. Hailing a cab, just 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 start it off with a yoo-hoo. It's never gonna be like, oh yoo-hoo, you have cancer. <laughs> it's always no. gonna be something like relatively pleasant, yeah. right? Good good times. It's a good time greeting. <laughs> Just imagining like a like like YouTube <laughs> colon <laughs> the good time greeting. <laughs> That's my ad pitch for big YooHoo. <laughs> Love it. My Don Draper uh, slogan pitch for for the word YooHoo. Love it. I was fairly obsessed with the uh, chocolate drink YooHoo when I was a child. I I feel like it's fine, right? I don't remember any. Like, I had it. I had it years later, and it was much less fine. But <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't think it was gross or anything when I had it as a semi-adult. But um, it's definitely not one of my favorite beverages, and it was when I was like three years old. 
I, I mean, I've yet. To, I mean, I don't. I don't think I've had chocolate milk in probably over a decade. <laughs> but like, if if I were, if I were like, man, this is what I want more than anything. I feel like we still never made a better way of making it than just milk and Hershey syrup, right? Like we kind of. Yep. We don't need like a prepackaged. It's not. It's not that complicated of a recipe. <laughs> Where we need a where we need a rabbit to, <laughs> to make it for us first, you know. I'm trying to remember the recipe for chocolate milk. <laughs> you <laughs> it's just chocolate syrup and, and milk. Yeah. <laughs> and you stir it up. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's if you if you're some sort of insane person that like doesn't own a spoon or a mm-hmm straw or something (laughs) if you're not able to mix the two ingredients together perhaps then you who is the product for you (laughs) but it doesn't really taste like chocolate milk either it's like its own you know class of beverage or whatever right tremendous (laughs) this is one of my favorite riffs we've done all year (laughs) (laughs) i think it's the best one like i (laughs) can't remember anything else but yeah here we are as in olden days happy golden days of your faithful friends who were near to us and so dear to us once more through the years ah, we all will be together I try to keep on keeping on.